Hello Roblox, um, this is UXUG and I'm really happy to show you my Hacker 2016 project called Future is Bright. Some of you may have seen my Hacker project from last year that was called Next Generation Voxel Lighting. You can find it on YouTube, there is a video about it. So what it was, was a new lighting system that used some of the same approaches that our current voxel lighting system uses, but with um, a lot of different details. So it ran completely on the GPU, it had one by one by one voxels, it had much higher quality as a result. So it was really well received and it was very fun to work with on. However, I started thinking, you know, what would it take to actually ship it? How um, do I make it accessible to everybody on Roblox? And it became apparent that there are a lot of problems to solve. Some of them are really hard problems. Some of them seemed like maybe they were just intractable. So the problems were in two categories. One category is quality. Shadow quality wasn't uh, as good as I hoped it would be. It was really hard to get good shadows from CSG and mesh parts. Spectral highlights didn't really look uh, as they should. And on top of this, performance was a challenge. Um, it ran well on desktop, good desktop GPUs, but if you didn't have a good desktop GPU, you were kind of out of luck. And given the quality issues, it was hard to solve the quality issues without having even more of a performance impact. Um, so looking forward, you know, several years, it became apparent to me that uh, this cannot be the foundation for the lighting technology that Roblox will use in the future. And this motivated me to work on another project, which is called Future Sprite, which is what I'll show you today. So this is a lighting system rebuilt from scratch. There is no oxels. Uh, it is a completely different technology. It is much faster than last year's technology and it looks much better. So let's look at the demos. The first demo that I have here is just a pretty simple level. There's a bunch of parts, there's a bunch of light objects. So you can see the spotlights. The first thing that you'll probably notice is specular highlights that look much, much higher quality compared to what they look like right now. Um, you can see that depending on the material, the interaction between the light source and the part uh, varies greatly. Of course, you know, you can take the part, you can move it around, you can pick the object, you can change the angle, uh, you can change the brightness, you can change the radius. The radius is still clamped to 60, but I think it's pretty much unlimited for all intents and purposes. Um, this is using an HDR simulation, so the brightness is pretty much an arbitrary number, so it can be really um, dark, it can be brighter, it can be 100, 1000, 10,000, just pretty much the brighter it is, the less visible the other light sources are. Of course, you can change the color freely, etc. So, this is pretty cool. Um, and of course, depending on the material of the base plate, you know, if it's concrete, the specular highlight is much wider. Um, if it's ice, it's very interesting. So what you have to be prepared for, of course, is it being Roblox, somebody will go in and create a lot of lights. Well, have no fear. So what you see here is you see a thousand, it's a grid of like 30 by 30. Um, so it's a thousand light objects and um, you can see the specular highlights from all of them. They look very nice. They run pretty fast. You can go uh, and change the base plates material to something else. For example, if it's plastic, you can see the specular highlights are much more matte. So this is roughly how it should work in real life, as long as you can actually get this many lights on, on a single plane. So this works well. Uh, now there is one big problem that 
this doesn't address, which is shadows. So let's look at that next. So this is an existing studio template. I pretty much didn't modify it as well. And we'll look at how shadows work here. So let's look at this first. So this is the CSG part. And this has been a big challenge in the system from last year. How do you make sure that CSG and mesh parts uh, cast shadows that are realistic? Um, so with this technique, this is pretty much not a problem. You can get the shadow to look exactly like it should look in real life. And all of this, of course, is completely dynamic. So if I reunion my object in a new configuration, you can see the shadow changes. This is a really, really faithful representation of what actually should happen. One other thing that you will see in this demo is the improved uh, bloom effect. So it's all using HDR rendering. So the bloom had to be adapted to that as well. You can see the specular highlight here. Uh, has really, really nice glare around it. So let's start a simulation. So something else worth noting is, so look at the humanoid shadow, and, you know, it looks really close to what you would see right now on Roblox and humanoids, but the crucial difference is the entire world can now have shadows of the same quality, and there are not any more weird quality issues where the self-shadows don't work, or if the humanoid gets really close to another part, there's weird big pixels. The existing uh, humanoid shadow technology in Roblox is kind of very specialized. It only works really well in one specific case. This works well across the board. Of course, if the character goes uh, near this part, it becomes um, occluded and it's now in the shadow. Of course, it's all dynamic, so you can topple this and it falls down. Uh, and all of the shadows that you see here, including these buildings, all of this is done using the system. It's all completely real time. So not only can you change the parts, you can also change the light source itself. So uh, in case of the sun, let's take the time of day, let's animate it. It all works. It's all real time, it's all immediate. Um, let's, oops. All right. Uh, you can change the brightness of the light source. You can change pretty much anything. And um, notice, <coughs> notice the um, glare around the character where the armor gets a lot of um, sun and it glows a bit. So this is all part of the same HDR simulation. So let's go inside. So here's, there is a small light source in this chimney and there is a part with neon material in it and it also participates in the same glare simulation. Notice the windows and notice them um, having specular highlights that also result in glare. And also look at shadows, right? So these shadows from the wall, from the window, they weren't really possible with the system from last year and of course aren't possible right now. So it turns out not only the current voxel resolution is insufficient, even one by one by one voxels um, are not small enough to get this shadow quality. However, the new system gets this pretty much effortlessly. And you can see really nice specular highlight, you can look out, there's our sun. It's the same deal for this window, right? Of course, keep in mind I can take the time of day, you can move it however I want, right? So it all, it all works. And I can go outside. There's a bit of an eye adaptation. These settings are exaggerated. I don't think you would have exactly that in game, but hey, uh, that's what the demo is for. All right, so this is all pretty good, and I was really happy with the quality of shadows, but one critical piece that was still missing is all of these shadows that you see here are still from one light source, the sun. So let's go ahead and fix that, shall we? So this is another studio template, and both this level and the previous one are pretty much unmodified. I took the levels, they were really beautifully, carefully designed. I changed some global lighting 
parameters and that's pretty much it and this is what you see this is really good because it shows promise for this new system from the standpoint of you get existing content you pretty much don't change it and you plug it into the new system and it shines which is exactly what we want so what do we have here so we have the same kind of nice shadows we have seen all that before so there is this button and when i press this button what it will do is it will start time of day animation so let's stop here for a second uh, so you can see there is a tree that's pretty far away and it casts really really detailed shadows on this building's wall so this is not quite dark enough let's go complete night time so notice something interesting happened the sun influence pretty much completely disappeared the sun is at the sunset and the light sources that were always there that were still on they now are visible this is the hdr something else is interesting here though check out this light source so this is not a spotlight this is a point light and what happens here is you see shadows of building walls in fact now you can see that any object that comes into the influence of this light gets its shadow and you're not limited of course to just one shadow casting light in fact uh, there are probably around 30 40 shadow casting lights in this level but even in this small building I can get more. I have a lantern in my backpack and once I equip it, check out what happens. So now you can see two light sources, both cast shadows, really high quality shadows, and both um, interplay very nicely. So let's go outside and look at a bit more of that. You can see that a lot of the detail in this level is pretty much just lights, shadows, and um, windows right so there's a door here let's go in let's go upstairs just a bit of shadow here there's shadows from this table and chair so here's a safe I'm not sure why it's open let's close it let's open it again so it's really dark inside we can wait a bit and the light will adapt a bit but also we have a lantern and now we can see the specular highlights on the um, walls of the safe and we can see the monies, the monies. Also note the specular highlight on the, um, on the window. Unfortunately, we don't have a glass material. This is using ice, you know, one thing at a time. So this is all pretty nice as well it all works so to give you an idea of the limit on the shadow resolution um, I think it's good to look at this door so these bars I think they are probably 0.2 studs or maybe 0.15 studs and this is probably close to the limit on the shadow resolution that you're gonna get and this as you see is plenty like I don't think you will actually need more resolution than that you can open this close this note the shadow reacts it's all dynamic, it's all interactive. You can open the door, the door closes. Note how the shadows, or rather the light from the two lanterns in two different buildings overlaps nicely. It's very, looking very good. So one piece that is crucial to this is there is an HDR simulation going on and every single object that you see on the screen is lit and it's lit using the exact same light setup so the reason why this is crucial is if you get light mismatch you will start to see artifacts that will confuse various systems like the auto exposure system will get confused the uh, objects will be lit differently so you will perceive them as being almost in different worlds so we can't have that so where previously we could say for example hey like let's look at particle systems particle systems don't need to be lit it's all good no this does not fly anymore here I have a smoke meter looks like your standard boring smoke meter however if you pay close attention you can see that the smoke actually gets light influence and shadows of course from the light objects inside the buildings and with my trusty lantern 
I can illuminate the entire smoke cloud. And of course this still is fast and responsive. So I thought I would end this demo at this nice station here. It's kind of amazing how this entire level was built with the current lighting system where there's not enough contrast, there's not enough resolution, you can't really make beautiful things with it. You can make things that look sort of nice, but compared to this, it's nothing, right? And it is amazing that the light setup here works so well with this new system. I did not have to tweak a thing. So you can see there is benches that cast shadows from these two light sources. You can see here the poles, the lights from the poles intersect. If you pay really close attention, there's a bit of shadow that's visible from this bench here because maybe this light source is a tiny bit stronger or something. And of course, look at the train. Just look at the train. So I was really, really happy when I got this all together, and this is where my demo ends. So please don't hesitate to leave thumbs up on the video. If you found this video through a Twitter post, don't hesitate to like the Twitter post, to retweet the Twitter post, or maybe both. And in general, you know, I'm really hopeful that this feature can become the Roblox lighting technology. And hoping to hear from you guys on whether you like it or not. Thank you for watching this. And that's it.